A very good morning, friends. I welcome you all to the weekly Indian Express newspaper article discussion brought to you by the Shankar IAS Academy. In this video, we are going to see even important events from the very last week of November. Displayed here are the news articles which we are going to discuss today. So, let us get into discussion. Look at this news article. Recently, to curb the rising online payment frauds, the government is planning to introduce a minimum time frame of transaction beyond a particular amount which is happening for the first time between two persons in UPA. In this time frame, a person can reverse or modify those payments. Know that it happens for the digital transactions likely about rupees 2000. See this is the crux of the article. In this discussion, we shall see about UPA and its futures. First of all, what is UPA? See, Unified Payment Interface or UPA is an instant real-time payment system which was developed by National Payment Corporation of India or NPCI. See, it's a system that allows multiple bank accounts into single mobile application, thus allowing the customers to pay directly from the bank account to different merchants. Know that it will happen both in online or offline mode. Actually, it is an advanced version of the Immediate Payment System or IMPS. The daily transaction limit for a single user of UPI is 1 lakh. Now, let us see the futures of UPI. Firstly, there is an immediate money transfer through mobile devices round the clock 24 into 7 for 365 days. Secondly, there is a two-factor authentication system which is aligned with the regulatory guidance of RBI. Thirdly, there is a virtual address of customer for push and pull transactions. Here know that the push transactions means when you send money by your own discretion that is sending money to your friend or your relative whereas the pull transaction means when you have given command that every month electricity company should cut the money from your bank account. To put simply company will pull money without requiring you to push or click button every month. Actually, in 2018, NPCA launched UPA 2.0 with the futures like linking of overdraft account. Actually, in addition to the current and saving accounts, now customer can also link their overdraft account to the UPA. Secondly, NPCA introduced a one-time mandate. Actually, it is called UPA mandate. With this, the customer can pre-authorize a transaction and pay at a later date. On the date of actual purchase, the amount will be detected and received by the merchant. Thirdly, Invoice in the inbox. According to NPCA, this feature is designed for the customer to check the invoice which is sent by the merchants prior to making the payment. It will help the customers to view and verify the credentials of the merchant. Finally, sign the intent and QR. It can be used to check the authenticity of the merchants while scanning QR or quick response code. It notifies the user with information to ascertain whether the merchant is a verified UPI merchant or not. This is all about the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the unified payment interface and the various futures of UPI. Please revise it often so that you can eliminate in the statement based questions. The various benefits and the challenges associated with UPI are more important for mains rather than for preliminary. With this learned points, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis. Look at this news article. Recently, Supreme Court approved the extension of Chief Secretary of Delhi for six months. This appointment was a point of contention between Delhi government and the central government. The court, while approving the appointment, said that it had not stayed the Government of National Capital Territory GNCT Amendment Act 2023. And the court also observed that this act was pending before the constitutional bench. Why I am saying this is, this act was used by the central government to appoint the chief secretary. See, this is the crux of the article. In our discussion, let us see the Government of National Capital Territory of Delhi or GNCT Amendment Act 2023 from our exam perspective. Let us know that it is an important topic under federalism, center state relation and separation of power. Before seeing the provisions of the Act, let us have a basics about the governance structure of Delhi for our better understanding. See, based on the recommendation of S. Balakrishna Committee in 1987, the Parliament enacted the 69th Constitutional Amendment Act 1991. This act introduced Article 239 AA in the constitution. This amendment introduced a governance structure where the NCT of Delhi will have an administrator and legislative assembly. Not only it created the structure but also it gave powers and functions to the legislature. The powers and functions include the legislative assembly will have power to make law for the whole or any part of the NCT in the matters of state list or concurrent list but know that the assembly cannot legislate on the following three subjects. They are police, 
பப்ளிக் ஆர்டர் அண்ட் லேண்ட் சி தெர் ஆர் வேரியஸ் இன்ஸ்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் கான்ஃப்ளிக் பிட்வீன் லெப்டினன்ட் கவர்னர் அண்ட் சிஎம் ஆஃப் டெல்லி ஓவர் த அத்தாரிட்டி இஷ்யூஸ் வென் போத் ஆஃப் தம் அப்ரோச் த கோர்ட் த சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட் கிராண்டட் தட் த கவர்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் டெல்லி ஹேட் கம்ப்ளீட் கமாண்ட் ஓவர் மோஸ்ட் சர்வீசஸ் இன் த டெல்லி லீவிங் அவுட் பப்ளிக் ஆர்டர் போலீஸ் அண்ட் லேண்ட் இன் தீஸ் த்ரீ சப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் த சென்ட்ரல் கவர்மெண்ட் ஹேஸ் எக்ஸ்க்ளூசிவ் பவர்ஸ் மோர் ஓவர் த எஸ்சி ரூல்டு தட் த எல்ஜி டிட் நாட் ஹேவ் அன் இண்டிபெண்ட் டெசிஷன் மேக்கிங் பவர் and he or she should bound by the aid and advice of council of ministers and cm after this pronouncement of judgment the central government enacted the government of national capital territory of delhi ordinance 2023 after the enactment of this ordinance the parliament passed the gnct amendment act 2023 see this is the background story of this amendment act now with this basics let us see the various provisions of this act firstly the creation of national capital civil service authority ncca see this act establishes this authority to make recommendations to the lieutenant governor of delhi on certain matters related to services this includes transfers and posting matters related to vigilance disciplinary proceedings prosecution sanctions of the group a of all india services except ips and danix know that nccsa consists of chief minister of delhi as chairperson the principal home secretary of delhi government as member secretary chief secretary of delhi government as member all decisions of this authority will be based on majority vote of the members who are present and voting the second provision is with the powers of the lieutenant governor this act expanded the discretion of the lg it delineates the matter where the lg may act solely on his discretion like the matters which are outside the legislative competence of the delhi assembly but which have been delegated to the lg or matter where he or she is required by law to act in his discretion the third provision is with the primacy to lieutenant governor since it expands the discretionary role of the lg by giving him powers to approve the recommendations of the ncca or return them for reconsideration moreover in case of a difference of opinion between lg and the authority the lg's decision will prevail fourthly this act introduced the duties of secretaries this act said that the concerned department secretary must to bring matters to the notice of lg chief minister and sec- chief secretary this includes the matters which bring the delhi government in controversy with the central or state government see this is all about the provisions of the act now let us see some key issues with the act an important issue is is this act gives more power to the central government this includes the control over the transfer and posting of officers in delhi see it clearly violates the government of nct of delhi versus union of india 2023 ruling of the supreme court see in this ruling the supreme court gave primacy of power to the delhi government the second issue is with respect to the structure of ncc sa see two of three members of the board is appointed by the central government moreover the decisions and meetings can be done even excluding the elected head that is the chief minister of delhi because the quorum for meeting of nccsa is two and the decision is by the majority the third issue is it is breaking the triple chain of accountability which is often stressed by the supreme court any democratic government should meet the triple chain of accountability that is civil servants accountable to ministers then the ministers are accountable to legislators and the legislators are accountable to electorate this act contradicting the first link as it makes the civil servants accountable to lg the fourth issue this act violates the principles of collective responsibility and this makes the department secretary brings the matter directly to lg bypassing the concerned minister finally he talks about the controversial matters where the secretary should report to the lieutenant governor but it did not give any clarity on this regard so it may be misused in the future thus bypassing the ministers and the cm and council of ministers this is all about the discussion in this analysis we saw about the gnct act and the various challenge associated with it revise it often so that you can have a sound knowledge of this act and the issues which are impinging this act see this is an important questionable area for our examination with this learned points let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis this express explained article talks about the recent geo economical and geo political issue of dollarization see in the recent election of argentina a self proclaimed libertarian and anarcho capitalist javier milei became the president see he is infamous for his unconventional and worrying views such as his opposition to abortion and his ambivalent attitude towards 
டார்ச்சர் அண்ட் அன்டெமோக்ராட்டிக் எக்ஸஸ் ஆஃப் அர்ஜென்டினாஸ் மிலிட்ரி கவர்மெண்ட் இந்த எக்கனாமிக் ஃப்ரண்ட் ஹி இஸ் பிளானிங் டு ரீப்ளேஸ் அர்ஜென்டினாஸ் கரன்சி த பிசோ வித் த டாலர் ஹி இஸ் ஆல்சோ அட்வொகேட்டிங் ஃபார் த எலிமினேஷன் ஆஃப் சென்ட்ரல் பேங்க் அண்ட் டு ஸ்லாஷ் த கவர்மெண்டல் ஸ்பெண்டிங் சி This is the crux of the article. In this discussion, we shall see about three important terms which could be important for our understanding. They are libertarianism, anarcho-capitalism and dollarization. First of all, let us see what is libertarianism. See, libertarianism is a political philosophy that gives primacy to individual liberty. Know that the basic premise of this theory is that the individuals have a certain God-given rights such as right to life and liberty, freedom of speech, right to property, freedom of worship etc it also tells that the duty of the government is to protect these rights let us see the second uh, phenomenon it is anarcho capitalism the term anarcho capitalism was coined by murray rothbard a leading figure in the american libertarian movement it advocates a society where the production and the exchange of all goods and services including those which are usually assigned to the states like law enforcement education protection of environment should be conducted through voluntary agreements between the individuals it seems very complex right let me break it for you with an example imagine a society where even law and order and judiciary is privatized in such a society the government has no monopoly on the police like it has on the present almost every sector of the economy is run on free market principles with the belief that people or the customers will choose the best option which is available among them this demand for the better quality goods and services will incentivize the entrepreneurs to come up with the most efficient solutions see this is about anarcho capitalism let us see the third term that is dollarization see what is dollarization it's a form of currency substitutions where dollar are used in addition to or instead of the local currency of the country it usually happens when a country's own currency loses its usefulness as a medium of exchange or the currency loses its usefulness due to hyperinflation or instability as in the case of argentina let us see three fully dollarized economies they are ecuador panama and el salvador know that they have had their economic successes following the dollarization process so in achieving the same argentina proposes this scheme now in our analysis let us see the significance of dollarization firstly it is a solution to hyperinflation let us see how it does it does this by breaking the linkages between the rising prices and money supply let us discuss how see when the domestic currency is replaced by dollars money supply can no longer be controlled by the vested political interests who often increases the spending for their political milieu this is exactly the case with respect to many hyperinflation countries like argentina and zimbabwe let us see the second significance secondly it will have a positive effect on the growth of the economy we shall know this from the success story of ecuador see the ecuadorian economy suffered a series of crises in 90s its economic output contracted by almost 7 percentage the inflation was running at 67 percentage and the domestic currency the sucre depreciating by almost 200 percentage in 1999 So, Ecuador announces the adoption of dollar in 2000. Since then, it is registering a considerable progress on both economic and social welfare. The World Bank estimates that the growth of the 4.5% in real GDP between 2001 to 2004 in Ecuador. Its poverty rate fell from 36.7% in 2007 to 22.5% in 2014. This tells the success rate of Ecuador in 2000. This tells the success rate of Ecuador. by adopting the dollarization principle let us see the third significance the third significance is with respect to the stability we know that dollar is a hard currency its stableness will enable the countries to make a long term plan regarding their economic activity fourthly integration into global economy full dollarization can improve the global economy by allowing for easier integration of economy into the world economy this will ensure the stable capital markets the end of sudden capital outflows and the lesser threat of balance of payment crisis see these are all the one end of the spectrum but there are various issue with the dollarization like loss of economic sovereignty of a country no immunity from the world shocks etc see if you prepare the challenges along with the above benefits you will have a comprehensive picture about this issue which is very important for our exam perspective this is all about the discussion in this discussion we saw about three important terms we also saw about the significance of dollarization with this learned points let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis look at this news article foreign portfolio investments or fpi worth 12400 crores 
infused in the debt market of India in the month of November. Know that this is the highest inflow in more than two years. This is the crux of the news article. In this discussion, we shall see about the two basic economic terms which are very important from our exam perspective. They are FDI and FPA. Actually, what do you mean by FPA and FDA? Technically, both are class of investments made by a person or a firm who is a resident outside India in the capital instruments of an Indian company. To put it simply, they are a class of foreign investments. Now, let us see the basics of FDI or foreign direct investment. See, FDI is the investment by a person who is a resident outside India through the various capital instruments like equity, debentures in the Indian market. Know that the investments which are done in an unlisted Indian company are in 10% or more of the equity capital of a listed Indian company will be considered as an FDI. Moreover, know that there are two routes of FDI, automatic route and government route. Firstly, with respect to automatic route, here no prior permission is needed for investing, thereby results in a minimum monitoring. Under this route, the investor just need to inform the RBI after the investment has been made. Know that in India, FDI up to 100% is permitted for agriculture, manufacturing, airport, e-commerce, etc. Secondly, with respect to government route, here prior to investment, an approval from the government of India is required. Know that it is permitted in sectors like defense and telecom, mining, print media, etc. See, the other characteristics of FDA, which are very important from a prelims perspective are, FDA generally happens through primary market of a country. Know that they are more sector specific in nature. That is, they will come in either manufacturing or service sector, etc. Know that they are long term investment. To achieve this phenomenon, there is always a lock in period, and during this period, the foreign investor cannot sell his investment. Moreover, this makes the FDA quite stable, and it can also happen in three ways that is, by purchasing of share, by forming a joint venture company, or by establishing a subsidiary company. Thus, in FDA, a foreign investor appoints board of directors and get involved in the decision making of a company. This is all about the FDA. Now let us see the basics of FPI or Foreign Portfolio Investment. See, FPI is any investment made by a person residents outside India in the capital instruments where such investment is less than 10% of the equity capital of a listed Indian company. Know that FPI can also invest in state or central government securities and they are treated as debts. Moreover, they require SEBI approval or license to invest in India. With this basic, let us see the characteristics of foreign portfolio investment. Generally, FPI happens through secondary market. Know that they can also happen through primary market. Secondly, unlike FDI, which is a sector specific nature, FPI is invested in general capital market. That is, a foreign investor is not particularly concerned about any sector. He or she will invest in any sector which gives a chance of share price appreciation. Thirdly, generally it's a short term investment and there will be no lock-in period. Now, having discussed both the basics of FPA and FDI, before concluding, let us see some prelims specific facts before we wind up this discussion. As we already know, FDA is an investment about 10%, but know that an investor may be allowed to invest below 10% and they can be still considered as FDA. This will happen only when the FDA stack is rise to 10% or beyond within one year from the date of first purchase. This obligation to do so will fall on the company. If the stack is not rise to 10%, the investment still will be considered as a portfolio investment. Moreover, in case of an existing FDA falls to a level below 10%, it can continue to be treated as a foreign direct investment. Guys, remember this saying, once an FDA, always an FDA. Lastly, in a particular company, an investor can hold the investments either under the FPA route or under the FDA route, but not both routes. These are all some of the prelims related facts about FDA and FPA. Guys, please revise it often because there will be statement questions which can be directly come from the basics of this class of investments. With this learned points, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis. Look at this article. Rising sea temperatures due to climate change is causing the tropical marine species 
to move from equator towards the poles. This climate phenomenon accompanied by a mass movement of species towards the pole is called tropicalization. See, this is the crux of the article. In our analysis, let us see about this climate phenomenon for our exam perspective. First of all, what is tropicalization? As we already saw, tropicalization is a recent global phenomenon characterized by a poleward range expansion of the marine tropical and subtropical species. This also means a range retractions or a decreased abundance of the temperate species in the biogeographic transition zone in the temperate regions. Know that such range shifts are caused by climate change and lead to the alteration of the interaction between various species. To sum it up, this will have a knock-on effects on the functioning of ecosystem and its stability. Moreover, know the term tropicalization was initially coined to describe the increase in tropical species in the Mediterranean Sea. Since then, it has been widely used to denote the increase in the ratio of tropical to temperate species in the marine temperate communities. Know that the tropicalization is a marine specific phenomenon, but it can also happen in the terrestrial ecosystem. In the long term, tropicalization can alter the assembly of community over various decadal time scales and ultimately lead to a new ecological and evolutionary results in a particular area. Okay, let us see why this phenomenon is happening. Main culprit is the climate change. See, the climate change has affected the physical factors of the ocean which in turn affects the dispersal of the species. To put it simply, climate change is affecting the ocean currents, thereby minimizing the boundaries of separation between tropical and temperate regions. Know that the warm water boundary currents are heating than the seawater averages. This facilitates the poleward movement of the species. Let us see what are the impacts of this phenomenon. See, it has a multitude of ecological and environmental consequences. The impacts will be ranging from, from the individual species level to community and ecosystem level. It has the capacity to alter the global biodiversity patterns. Overall, it may increase the invasive species in a native areas which in turn affects the native species of the region. See, this is all about the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the climate phenomenon called tropicalization and we saw the causes behind it and finally we saw the impacts of this phenomenon. If you like today's video, like, comment and share it with your friends. For more updates regarding our UPSC preparation, subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy. Thank you.